Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy. And I'm her daughter, Mickey. Welcome, Welcome to, to Kitty Comics. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining today on this special Friday. We are super excited that you guys could all be here. And so we're just going to start off with uh, a few housekeeping tips, as usual, um, before we get in uh, with our special topic today. And we have another special, special guest that's joining us. So I'll let our guest explain. But um, first of all, we just like to thank everybody for joining. And we just want to thank everybody that is keeping us safe and healthy through this time. All of the doctors, the nurses, the janitor staff, the police officers, the paramedics, um, the grocery store, the delivery men and women, and the, especially the that is keeping all of our kitties learning through this time. So we just want to give you a big thank you and a big virtual hug <laughs> uh, for helping out our kitties through this time and, and, and the parents, of course. Um, just some other housekeeping items. If there's anything that happens with your audio and, you, and it uh, tunes out and you can't hear, there's a mic either at the bottom of your screen or to your right of the screen. There's a drop down arrow there. All you have to do is uh, you can either call back in using your phone or just try to log out and log back in. Um, that usually corrects any problems that happens. Um, if anything happens with your audio or you can't uh, see or hear us. Also, uh, just for the chat box to remind you guys that all of our talking back and forth will be done in the chat box. So if you have any questions through this time that we're presenting, please use the chat box to ask any questions that you may have. And uh, we will be monitoring or I'll be monitoring the chat box along with our guests uh, to answer any questions that you may have. And the last thing is, because this is going to be a really interactive session, please make sure you get out your pens and your paper uh, to write down anything that our special guest will be presenting today, okay? So, what is Kittynomics? Kittynomics is here for ages eight plus, or actually for us, you know, kids learn through osmosis. So if you have a two-year-old or a three-year-old, kids learn by what they see uh, their parents doing. So the earlier, we just think that there's no age to start with financial literacy, any age, because as the earlier that they learn about financial literacy, the more that they'll have a healthier relationship towards financial literacy and helping just to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. So that's what Kittynomics is about. We have it on a weekly session every Friday at 11 a.m. We're here. Um, so we just hope that you can join us every single Friday. We'll just present a different topic with a different speaker, um, but we'll be here. So our speaker this week, yay, we're so excited. So we have Miss April Mullings again. Uh, she presented last week. So just to remind you guys who she is, because she is awesome. She's a graduate of the University of Toronto. April has worked in the accounting field for over 18 years. I'm sure that's older than a lot of you guys that's on the call right now. <laughs> She holds a Bachelor of Commerce uh, degree with a specialist in management and economics. As a finance professional, she has advised clients across the various industries and the implementation of accounting systems and processes, enabling them to, um, enabling them to more effectively manage their operations and personal finances. Her range of services include consultation in the business startup phase, ongoing financial reporting and management, payroll, administration, sales tax reporting, personal and corporate tax return preparation, and her, among her greatest joys is seeing her clients effectively use their financial information to make informed and smart choices. That's what we want you guys to do. April is also a mom of an adorable little boy, and she's a strong advocate of early financial literacy. So we'd like to give a big kittynomics welcome to Miss April. Miss April, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. There we go. Hi, Miss April, and who do you have there? We see someone Hi. special. Hi, everyone. So I'm Miss April, as Miss Stacy said, and today I have my nephew who agreed to come and sit with us today while we learn about assets and liabilities. 
abilities. So this is Peyton, AKA Peyton the Great One. And today we're gonna have fun together while we learn about assets and liabilities, right? Right. right. All right. Hey, Peyton, we're excited to have you on Kittynomics. Thank you. All right. So as you know, or for those of you who are new this week and joining us, one of my favorite topics is money. And yes, it is. And why is money one of my favorite topics? That's because money gives us power. Power to do lots of things. Power to go on trips. Power to buy things that we need and some of the things that we want. So I want you to always be smart about how you use this power. And that means being smart about how you use your money. So last week we talked about budgeting. This week, we're gonna learn a little bit about what assets and liabilities are. So I know that that sounds like some fancy terms, but I'm gonna break it down for you so that by the end of today, you're going to be able to say very clearly what an asset is and what a liability is. So if you don't already have your pen and your paper, grab that pen or have mom or dad grab a pen, grab a paper for you so that you can write down your notes for today. I also want to, oh, Miss Stacy came ready, nice. I also want to encourage you to ask questions. That's what I'm here for, that's what Miss Stacy's here for. So no question is silly. If there's something that you don't understand, put it in the chat. Miss Stacy's gonna monitor the chat box and let me know if there are any questions. Um, and if you have any answers or suggestions to things that I might ask, throw them in the chat. I wanna hear what you have to say so that, I, so that I know that you're learning. All right, sounds good? Sounds good, Pete? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get started. Today, we are going to use the magic letter O. And I want you to remember that because the magic letter O is going to come up a few times during our chat today. All right, so what's our magic letter? O. O, all right. So the first question, what is an asset? Now an asset is something that has value. So typically it's something that you own. Remember I said the, the magic letter O? It's something that you own that has as value. So there are different, anything could be called an asset. Someone might say, oh, you work so hard. That's a good asset to have as a person. Or um, you're such a kind person. That's a nice asset. But today, the type of asset that I'm going to talk about, yes, oh, someone's early in the game. The type of asset we're gonna talk about are financial assets. And someone presented a good example in the chat. It's like a house. That is a great example of an asset. So remember, an asset is something that you own. So on your sheets of paper, put something you own. And that's a key word own all right and it's something that you own that has financial value so a good example of that is a house what about money in your piggy bank your savings that's an example of an asset mom or dad might have what they call a resp which is money that they've put aside for when you go to college or university that's an example of an asset because it has value that you will use later on. Other examples are cars. They're worth lots of money. That's another example of an asset. Now, do you know that if you have money and you lend it to your friend and your friend owes you that money, that that's actually an asset to you because somebody somebody owes you something so at any point you could go to that person and say can i have my money back please and it's valuable so even when people owe you money that is also an asset even though you don't actually have that money in your hand so that's a, a very very tricky one but it's a good thing to know that that is also an asset so we let's write down some of our examples you can write it on your paper so the first one that Shakima said was house. What were some of the other ones? 
cars. Um, savings, money, yes. RESPs for when you go to college or university. And I'm even going to write IOUs because you're going to want your money back and that is your asset. All right, so that is what an asset is. An asset is something of value that you own. That's right, something of value that you own. All right, so now we get to talk about what is, <laughs> what is a liability. So a liability is the opposite of an asset. So that means it's something that you Oh. oh, that's right. There is that O letter again, something that you owe. All right. Some people actually call liabilities debts. That ugly word, nobody wants to have debts. You don't ever want to owe anybody anything. So it's not a nice thing usually, right? So you may hear your parents say, oh, I need to get rid of my debt. That's what they mean. They want to get, they want to make sure that they don't owe anybody any money. So let's say that your parents own a home. Sometimes a home is really, really, really expensive. So sometimes they have to go to the bank. So a few weeks ago when Kidonomics talked about mortgages, sometimes mom and dad need to go to the bank and borrow money from the bank to pay for the house that you live in. When they borrow that money from the bank, they're now indebted to the bank. That means they owe the bank money, right? So yes, they owe the bank money for the house. So what is a liability? It is something you owe. And some examples of that would be a mortgage. What about that fancy car that mom and dad take you around with? Oh, that's a good one from Courtney. A loan, yes. A loan. And you know what some of the types of loans that are out there? When mom and dad are taking you around and driving you to soccer practice and whatnot in that car, sometimes they need help from the bank to buy the car. And sometimes mom and dad will have what's called a car loan. So that car loan is actually a liability because they have to pay back the bank for the car loan. Now, there's another type of loan that I think it's a good loan because with this loan, you borrow money and you use it to go to school. So let's say you're ready to go to university. Mom and dad have saved up some money and some RESPs for you but university and college is super, super, super expensive. So sometimes mom and dad, yes, Courtney, a college fund, right? You might have a college fund that might pay for some, might pay for all, but let's say that you don't have enough for all of your years at university. Sometimes you can borrow money that's called a student loan. So normally that's not a good thing, but because you are investing in yourself, you're gonna to go to school to learn so that you could get a lot of knowledge and then come out and have a really good job. And then you will pay back your loan. So a student loan is a good type of liability to have. All right, so right here, we're gonna put loan, but I also wanna put student loan. And when you get older, that's the type of loan that will help you when you're ready to go to college. So if we recap, what is a liability? A liability is something that you owe. That you owe, that's right. And those could be a mortgage, a car loan, a bank loan. Now, if you go to the store. How about a credit card? Oh, credit card, yes. That's a good one because you're spending money that you don't actually have. 
yeah, when you when you swipe the credit card, there's no money there. You're borrowing money from the bank to pay for the stuff that you want. So that's why we have to be smart about whether or not we use our credit card. Now, these might sound like really big fancy terms to children, but do you know that if you went to the store and you wanted to buy something and you didn't have enough money and your friend says to you, oh, you know what? You can have a toonie from me and you can pay me back later. Do you know that now that you have a liability, you have a debt? that you have to pay back to your friend. It's the same thing because now you owe your friends money, right? So you even have to be careful with that when you borrow money from your friends, you're gonna have a liability because now you're gonna owe that money. So that's something we need to be very careful about borrowing money from friends so that we don't end up with too much debt or too much liability. All right. Some of our participants are asking, um, is credit cards a, a form of a loan? So is that really debt? Because I, because I think they're wondering if credit card was your money, your credit. money. Oh, credit card is not your money. N-O-T, not your money. <laughs> it is a loan pretty much from the bank or whichever store that credit card is from and you owe them that money. All right. Can I say it again? A credit card is not yeah. your money. <laughs> a debit card, yes. A debit card is your money because a debit card goes directly into your bank account and takes out your money from your bank account. So thank you for whosoever asked that question. That was an awesome question. All right. So we know what an asset is and we just learned what a liability is. So now we have to figure out how both of them work with each other. So what does net worth mean? Net worth is assets minus liabilities. All right, so I'm gonna write it down so you could write it on your paper as well. So it's assets. Whoops. Oh my gosh, this April can't spell today. Minus liabilities. And that will give us net worth. And that's a very important number. So let's say you had, let's say you had assets totaling $100, but you owed on your credit cards <laughs> $50. That means that your net worth is now $50 even though you have $100 in cash, because you owe somebody $50, that means that you really only have $50. And that is what's referred to as your net worth. Exactly. So when people say that, oh, so-and-so is rich or they're wealthy, that is what's used to describe someone who has a high net worth because they have more assets or they have a lot of assets and not a lot of liabilities. So then they end up with a really high net worth. So in order to have more net worth, you need more assets. Yes. And so there's some very, very um, rich people in the world, right? I don't know. Have you ever heard of Jeff Bezos? Do you know who that is? Okay. Do you ever see mom or dad? They might get these brown boxes that de get delivered to the front door that says Amazon. Jeff Bezos, he is worth $113 billion because of Amazon. So that's his net worth. He has a lot of assets and not as many liabilities. And he has a net worth of $113 billion. Another popular one, who loves basketball? Do you know who Michael Jordan is? Yeah. Yes. Michael Jordan has a lot of assets. The greatest of all time. Yes, he is. 
and Michael Jordan's net worth is $2.1 billion. Sounds like a lot of money, right? Yeah, so those are some of the examples that you can use to motivate you so that as you grow older, you focus on getting assets so that you can build your net worth. And another very popular person, or they might not be popular to you, but they're popular to mom and dad, Miss Oprah Winfrey. She is worth $2.5 billion. So that means she has $2.5 billion more assets than she has liabilities, right? So our goal is always to have more assets, less, less liabilities, so that you increase your net worth. Yes. Now at the end of the day, you should never measure your worth simply down to money. That is not at all what I'm saying. You may be a kind person, you may come from a loving family, you may have so many things that make you valuable. So your worth is never just measured in terms of money. But because we're talking about money today, that's why I want to encourage you to do all that you can as you grow up to spend your money on assets. And that way you build your net worth as you grow. And then that net worth gives you power to do lots of things. Cool? All right, so guess what I want us to do now? I want us to learn to identify what are assets and what are some liabilities. So we're going to play a little game. You want to play a game with me? Yeah? You don't sound excited. <laughs> okay, we're going to play a game. And this game is called Asset or Liability. Or you know what? Let's put in our O words over here. So over here we have own and over here what shall I put? Oh. oh, that's right. So there are our magic words, O and O. So let's see what the first one is. This is a picture of a house. house. Is a house a asset or is it a liability? Asset. A, that's right. A house is a asset. asset. So we're gonna stick our house right there. Yay! All Thank right, you. next one. Asset. Don't forget to participate in the chat box, guys. We see you. Yes, if you have any ideas or answers, just pop them in the chat. I can see them. Okay, this one's tricky. Money that you owe to a friend. Is this an asset or is it a liability? A liability. Yeah. Yes, Mickey, it's a liability. Oh my gosh, you guys are so smart. Two for two. So I'm gonna stick that one right there. Let's see what the next one is. Woo a car. I know that one. What is it? Is it's a car an asset or a liability? A liability. And a car? <laughs> Well, I think she's thinking if you owe oh, if you a car owe. loan. All right. right. So let's pretend that mom or dad bought, mom or dad has great net worth and they bought this car completely with cash. Is it an asset or is it a liability? It's an asset. It's an asset. That's right. So we're going to put our car over here under our asset. Now. Good for you, Janaya. That's right. Yes. yes. Good job. Now, I want to teach you a little secret, though. While a car is an asset, it's what we call a depreciating asset. That means that as time goes by, the value of the car goes down, right? So it's good to have, but we shouldn't spend too much money on those things because the value of it goes down over time. Where you want to spend your money as you get money and get older is on things that go up. That means that they appreciate. So things like a house gets more valuable over time. Things like your savings get more valuable because you earn interest and those things grow. So a, a car is a good asset to have because we need it to get around 
but don't spend too much money because we want to put our money in assets that appreciate and go up and get more in value. All right. Okay. We have two more. Let's see what they are. What's this one? Savings account. See, there is the piggy bank getting fed with savings. Is this an asset or a liability? Asset. Yes, I see assets all around. Awesome. So we're going to stick this one over here. Ooh, our asset side is looking nice and healthy. Woo. And then last but not least, I don't know if you remember what I said. This one might be tricky. This one says student loan. Student loan. Is a student loan an asset or a liability? Liability. What? You guys are so smart. Yay. Well done. So I am so impressed. You have done a really good job of identifying different types of assets and different types of liabilities. So as you go through the summer, maybe one day you could convince mom or dad to sit down with you. I'll tell you a secret. A lot of grown-ups have never assessed their net worth. Never. They have no idea what their net worth is. And it's an important thing to know. Because you know, if you ever want to invest in a business, your net worth is really, really important. A lot of um, banks and important things look at your net worth when they're trying to see whether or not you qualify for some things. So I think you should nag mom or dad, say, mom, dad, let's sit down. Let's figure out what your net worth is. And they might look at you and say, what are you talking about? But go and bug them. And sometime this summer, ask them, let's sit down. Let's write down what your assets are. Let's write down what your liabilities are so we can figure out what our net worth is as a family. Sounds good? Awesome. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'd be so happy to answer them. Do you have any questions, mister? No questions? <laughs> All right. I have a couple of questions. All right. So there are certain things that are an asset and a liability, and you kind of covered that, like a house. A house is also an asset, but then we said you can have a mortgage that is a liability. So then how do you calculate your net worth with that? If you owe something on a assets, then how do you know what your, your, your net worth is? So that's where we go back to when we talked about net worth. So in this case, let me put my net worth sheet back up. There we go. So in this case, let's say this, we put this as this is a house because that's the asset. And then here is where you put the mortgage. So whatever the house is worth goes up top. Whatever the mortgage is, is what you subtract. And then hopefully mom or dad, we have a positive number at the bottom. And that's how come you figure how much of that house is your net worth. And that really measures how much of the house you own. So until you pay back the bank, their money for the house that you live in, the house kind of belongs to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amelia. Scary. This is fun. This is awesome. Thank you, Amelia. She says we're, she's having fun on awesome. having assets and liabilities. So that means you would want to make sure that your liabilities is, is a lot less than your assets. Yes, absolutely. I have a question. Is it possible that you can be, um, is it possible that you can be one of the richest people? Like the first, like the first rich person? Like, like, like Richard and Jeff Bezos? Yeah. Yeah. I think anything is possible. So if you work super, super hard and you come up with super smart ideas about how to make money and how to invest your money, you could become even wealthier than Jeff Bezos. I think so. So what else is an asset? Is Minecraft an asset or a liability? 
I don't know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You're going to say, well, I have clothes. Are those an asset? Is Minecraft an asset? And based on the definition that I gave you, it sounds like it, right? But what's going to happen at the end of the year? Are you going to outgrow those clothes? Are they going to get washed out? Are you going to lose pieces of your Minecraft? You have to figure out whether or not that thing is going to have value for a long time. So if it doesn't have that kind of value, it's more like an expense that we talked about last week where like you eat food or you play with toys. But if it's something that's not going to last for very long, then typically we don't refer to it as an asset. So necessarily having the latest pair of sneakers or having the newest phone like having the newest gadgets are those those are those assets or liabilities it sounds like miss april is saying that they're not assets necessarily they're more liabilities because they don't appreciate over time i would they wouldn't even be liabilities they'd be more like expenses right so you're you're it's money that you spend things on regularly because they don't last the, the new pair of Jordans are going to get old or your feet are going to grow big and then they'll be of no more value to you. So remember where we said that an asset is something of value. So those things don't have lasting value and that's why we don't refer to them as asset. I see a good question popping up. Is an Airbnb a liability? So an Airbnb is similar to a house. It's a property that you own so we would treat it just like how we did the house and the mortgage example so the airbnb itself is a asset however if you have a mortgage on it where you owe the bank you also then have a liability so hopefully your airbnb is more valuable than the mortgage that you have outstanding on it we had a, thank you. We had another great question from Zion. Is net worth, or sorry, is revenue the same as net worth? No, it's not. So with revenue, revenue is money that we bring in. So if your parents give you an allowance uh, every week, then you bring in that money, let's say every week. So that's your revenue every week. And that's completely different. And if you want more information on that, you can check the YouTube channel because we did last week when we talked about budgeting, we talked about what revenues were and what expenses were. So that will give you a really, really good idea about what revenues are. Fantastic. Is there any more questions for Miss April? No? Okay. So we are going to wrap up. So we want to thank you, Miss April and Peyton, for joining us. Thank you. We learned so much today about assets and liabilities, and we hope to continue on this conversation about assets and liabilities as the weeks progress. Um, but we just thought we'd like to ask the last question that we always ask the group is: What would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer here at Kittynomics is real change that impacts the world. And the reason why we say that is we think if you guys become more financially literate as kids, you grow into adults that can make um, better educated choices and decisions that will positively impact your a successful financial future for you. So that's what we like to think here. But you know what? How about you guys answer this question? Tell us, what do you think if you became more financially literate, what would the answer be to that? And we would love to hear from you. So let us know using hashtag Kittynomics or ask Kittynomics, and we just love to hear from you guys. So uh, somebody did ask on the chat whether or not this is the last week. No, Kittynomics is here weekly for you guys. Every Friday at 11 a.m., we will have a different topic and a different speaker um, that we will discuss something or in some aspect regarding financial literacy. So Miss April has been wonderful, and we've been doing a mini series with Miss April for the last couple of weeks. So last week was budgeting, this week is assets and liabilities, and next week is taxes. Yay! <laughs> Understanding what are taxes, which I'm sure a lot of you don't even know what that is. I don't even know what it is. I 
I thought it came from taxes. Yes, well, that's what we're gonna discuss, right? Like we're gonna discuss what are taxes. So we are looking forward to having Miss April on again um, next week, which is uh, taxes. And uh, after that, we're gonna be following up with uh, savings. So different types of saving vehicles, what are savings? And, uh, and then the following one will be RESPs, which Miss April kind of touched on in this session. So that's gonna be amazing. So we had our other following weeks. If you guys check out our Kittynomics channel, we've done uh, stocks for kids, mortgages for kids, real estate for kids, budgeting for kids. Now assets and liabilities, next week will be taxes. So stay tuned and check out our Kittynomics channel because every single one of our sessions is recorded and uploaded to our Kittynomics um, YouTube channel. And also, uh, if you want to ask any one of our experts, our financial literacy experts that um, has been on our show, their contact information is on the YouTube channel. Miss April's is located there. Um, so if you have any follow-up questions for her, or if you just want to ask, you know, a personal question, you can follow up with her or send us an email. So we just like to wrap up because you kind of keep it at a 40 minute mark. So we just like to thank everybody for joining. We also want you guys to know that we're trying to cr create tiny financial literacy ambassadors across the globe. So can you tell us what is it that you guys would like to learn about? Some topics that you guys would like us to cover um, and then we'll have on an expert to talk about that topic. You can send us an email or please follow us on our social channels, right? So if you can, what is, should they do for YouTube? They should uh, subscribe to us. Yes. And they should like. Like. And, and hit that bell. And hit the bell and make sure <laughs> it shapes. Yes. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right. So all of our channels are Kittynomics. So please make sure you follow us. Um, just because the more that we can share with everybody about what financial literacy is, the more impactful that it will be to creating tiny financial literacy ambassadors across the globe. Or you can also send us an email at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. So that's it, everybody. Thank you for joining this week. We'll see you next week with Miss April again, and maybe Peyton. We see you, Peyton. <laughs> and maybe Peyton next week on uh, Kittynomics. So Kids Financial Literacy with Kittynomics every Friday at 11 a.m. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh. <laughs>